Nah. nah, it's too cold. Oh my god. Oh, it is so cold. What's up, guys? Mr. Ben Burns here for the future, and uh, today we're coming at you from Yosemite at Winter Work Week 2018. And I'm sitting here with the man, the myth, the legend, Ron. Yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, from Flux. He is designs only daily vlogger. I think the best place to start is just to give our audience like kind of background, who you are, what you're doing. Okay, so uh, I'm a, basically I'm a designer based in Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, I kind of split my time between doing freelance design uh, and I usually work with tech startups. And then uh, part of my job, I'm also, I also have my own startup company, and so I'm a co-founder in, in a product company that also is serving the, the freelance and creative um, and customers. And that's Prospero, right? Yeah, it's Prospero. It's online proposals for creatives. And so it's kind of like sp splitting my time between being a freelancer myself and, and creating solutions for other freelancers. And then you have a family, and then yeah. it, so you're, you're got a busy two kids. guy. <laughs> and, and on top of that, I upload a video to YouTube every day, every weekday. Every yeah. weekday. Yeah. I am so impressed by that. How has it yeah. been? It seems like a lot to me because I've tried that and I've lasted like two days. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's it's fun. It's like my hobby because I really enjoy the edit and kind of sharing my my perspective and kind of like documenting in a way. Yeah. So yeah. And so. you know, I've. I've watch you from like maybe a thousand subscribers on up and uh, I've noticed that you've been able to pull on a couple sponsors including a company called Webflow yep. um, and I just got introduced to Webflow recently and I'm very impressed by them. How has that journey been for you? So basically specifically with Webflow it's, it's like a tool that I've been using for like three years and mm -hmm. has literally changed kind of my life and the way I work as a freelancer and also in my product business. And so organically, like because I share my process and how I work, I was sharing a lot um, of myself using Webflow and mm -hmm. they've noticed it. And we kind of started having, building a relationship. And uh, at one point around, after a year of me vlogging, I was like thinking maybe it's time for me to look for a sponsor. Yeah. And it was just like, I thought it was the perfect, perfect fit for us because I'm not really, trying to sell them i'm just like organically really authentically using them mm. super passionate about them and it's it's just a good fit yeah and so um and so we've been working together for over a year now wow it's been i think it, for me it's been amazing i think it's been beneficial for them as well and so that's yeah, awesome i think and it's yeah. only through that exposure of putting yourself out there on social media that you've been able to to make that relationship right it's true yeah it's yeah it's amazing because i've if I think if I haven't been putting out the videos, they probably would never know who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when, when one of the co-founders actually came to Israel on another kind of trip, uh, he reached out to me because they knew who I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to grab dinner together and that's how the relationship actually started to build up. And yeah, so I think for me putting out the, the videos, again, it's something that's fun and that I'm doing, but it helped me to, to to get connection with a lot of people, um, yeah. which is super beneficial. One of them turned into kind of a sponsored relationship, sure. but, but just getting to know a lot of people. Um, and here I met a lot of people in this event specifically that knew me because I had a video um, a video channel. And so, yeah, that's, that's one benefit of putting yourself Definitely. out Definitely. Yeah. You know, a lot of our audience, uh, we get a lot of questions on, about this is like, what do I do? Everything that I do, it looks so boring. You know, I'm not riding around on a boosted board every day. I'm not doing any of these like, like cool, like hanging out of a helicopter and things like that. I do. It's like, he's a, he's a you dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I totally understand that. Well, sometimes I am like, like riding on my bicycle for a client meeting. Yeah, and yeah. I get to sh to s show the context of where I'm living and, and my city and, and yeah. kind of how I live. But some t some days I work from my home office and some days. I never leave home and there is nothing really interesting about this but I, so my video can be just like a one shot of me talking to the camera and explaining mm -hmm. here's what I've been working on today or here's my struggles for today and this is what I've been going through so it's not like every one of my videos is like a video masterpiece like amazing <laughs> sometimes it's just me talking to the camera but it's just like yeah yeah but I know when I log into YouTube if it's a if it's a weekday you got a you got a video out so that consistency yeah. is really nice for for me as a viewer yeah. um, and then you know I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on 
what we find as kind of our ordinary life, a lot of people are really interested in that. And I'm wondering if you have any insight on that or suggestions for our audience, like trying to figure out what to post and what to talk about and what can you can you so talk my, about that a little? my perspective in life I, that I think it would be very beneficial to try to learn something every day hmm. so I once read a book when I was a kid it was like a fantasy book but one of the, like the wizards right. <laughs> said a sentence that really struck me which is a day that you learn something is not a waste a day and I really try to implement that in my life and so I Every day I'm, I'm the, like the actual the, the YouTube channel helps me because I know I have to produce something and so I'm in constant reflection of what's what's happening today what's the Did story I, yeah. yeah what's the story did I learn something today mm-hmm. if not what, what am I struggling with what am I you know because and, and in a way it helps me to be accountable for mm. for my time and my work and making sure that I'm not just slacking off you know checking Facebook and Instagram right. and whatnot yeah. because I know that something has to happen today like what did you accomplish today it's that and internal that, deadline exactly. that you, you have to plan for so in a way I'm doing it for me because it helps me to stay on track wow. and and you know reach my goals and do stuff right. so yeah yeah Okay, that's awesome. But before you were a smash hit on YouTube, <laughs> I don't know uh, I am, but, you were okay. a designer. I am still a designer, still a designer. By the way, I would never call myself a YouTuber. Okay. This, I would never want this to be like my full-time thing. Mm-hmm. It's just, as I said, it's a hobby. It's something like on top of my, my work process. You know as a freelancer as a designer as an entrepreneur mm-hmm. so I'm always like designer first okay yeah. so let's go back to the beginning yeah where did you start in design can you talk about like the way that you kind of launched into your career yeah so I started you You know like I guess a lot of people with with a pirated version of Photoshop back in high school um, yes, and just I, I doing, mean, no. yeah <laughs> just just doing, <laughs> doing doing logos for my classmates and stuff like that mm-hmm. and actually you know just because I was like doing fun stuff for my friends um, I got opportunities to freelance really right from high school because you know one kid his dad needed something for his company and his son was like hey I got this kid in class he can do that for you and mm-hmm. so So I, w- I was fortunate enough to to uh, kind of got get, get this opportunities for freelance and uh, I've been doing that for years I actually I actually started getting full-time job um, so got started in advertising really like low-level mm-hmm. uh, works and and built myself up but because I was always freelancing for like 15 years mm-hmm. as a kind of a side job I've created a big network of people who know me who've worked with me in mm-hmm. the past and who, who trust me and so when I moved like four years ago into full-time freelancing mm-hmm. my network was big enough already to sustain my Um, to sustain myself as a freelancer and so honestly I don't do really marketing and I got enough of inbound kind of request to, mm-hmm. to sustain myself um, yeah That's... and it's a lot it's a lot you know community and making friends and and you know it's it's kind of a karma thing because when I get too much work I send them over to my friends yeah and they got and then and then It works out we're finding that relationships is the key it is, the, the it most is. question the most asked question we get on the channel is how do you find clients and every single time it's like okay well who do you know you know if, if you're not out there and if you're if you're not out there and being transactional because a lot of people like will go network and they'll shake hands and you, you kind of get that desperate vibe yeah. but if you're out there making connections and you're building your network organically you Um, you know wonderful so for things me, can happen I, I personally I don't like the word networking that much for me it's just making friends yeah. you know I like for example one of the things that I like to do as a freelancer is because I work from home mm-hmm. I don't want to be alone all day long and so I, I get I go out to lunch with people so sometimes mm-hmm. it's a might be a friend that I haven't seen in a while sometimes it might be a classmate mm-hmm. and sometimes it might be just people that I, I look up to in the community so it might be other entrepreneurs or something like that I would reach out and say hey I I'm you know I'm going out to lunch with interesting people would mm-hmm. love to get you lunch let's let's meet up and I've met a lot of people that way and just became yeah. friends with them not not really looking for anything it's not like I need a job right. just, I want to hear your story I want to yeah. get to know you you look interesting you know I've been reading your blog for a while let's get to know um, and then you know a couple of months later they might ask me a question regarding a design so mm-hmm. what do you think about this what and I'll be helpful to them eventually maybe like two years down the road and They might end up giving me a like a project but I'm not thinking about it that right, way right. I'm just like 
I love making friends and I think it's about friendships and being helpful. Yeah. So it's not like, I don't know. I, I totally yeah. agree. The, the relationship building is, is, it's much more. I mean, it's, it's getting to know another human being well enough to be top of mind when something comes up. Yeah. And as long as you're not driven by that motivation and driven by that purpose of like getting something from someone, um, you can build this organic uh, network of people that are just, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll continue to feed what you need. I'm a big believer in the, do you know, like, I, I, don't, I forgot who came up with it, the no like trust thing. Mm. So it's like, once it's very important that people around first of all they know you i mean they know this guy is a designer so you know you're in a way top of mind and then they like you they they think mm -hmm. you're a nice person because obviously everybody wants to work with nice people and yeah. then they trust you which is either they've worked with you in the past or they've got somebody who told them that you're a reliable person you did a good job and so once you get like all three of them that person is very likely to hire you if something mm -hmm. is missing Maybe you're like super professional, you've got like amazing portfolio, but you're not likable, then, you know, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, <laughs> your chances are low. And, and that's why uh, you have that mural in your office, right? Yeah. Work hard and be nice to people. Exactly. I love that, yeah. I love that, yeah. yeah. I try to remind myself that because, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the work and, you know, just, you know, doing good work, but it's like, eventually you're working with somebody, you don't realize that that person like my clients hire me to be their shrink sometimes mm -hmm. because they just want to talk oh, and yeah. they need me to listen and then tell them it's okay let's yeah. let, let's do it i'll help you you know with whatever you need designer um, daily vlogger youtuber <laughs> and counselor <laughs> i mean if you're not one you're you're not very likely to be hired yeah because that's what they need i i think i read an article once about um uh, from 37 Signals, you know mm -hmm. them? Um, base so, Camp, right? Base Camp, yeah. yeah. So they wrote that they, they, when they were, they started off as a design agency, they realized that what their client are looking to buy is not design deliverable. Mm -hmm. It is like confidence. Mm -hmm. It's like, Crystal reassure calls it me. Assurance. Yeah, assurance. assurance. Reassure me that it's going to be okay because let's imagine that your client needs a logo. So mm -hmm. it's not a problem to get a logo for like $5, $50, but, you know, when, when I can get a, dollar, uh, a logo for $50, I might as well get 10 so mm -hmm. I can choose whatever I want. But when I'm in that position, how do I know that I chose the right one? Right. How do I know that this is what's gonna really elevate my, right. my, you know, my business? And so what actually happens is that clients pay a lot of money for you to convince them that this is the right solution for it's them. It's more of a consultative need. approach yeah. than a pixel pusher, exactly. uh, an order taker. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and okay, so you grew up in Israel, yep. right? And you're still there today. Yep. Okay, so that's Tel Aviv. Yep. Loving okay. It. I just want to make sure I'm saying everything right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great city. If you get a chance, come down during the summer. Yeah. It's fun. One of the questions that we get asked a lot is I live in whatever country they live in, and they don't value design here, how do I convince them to pay me what I'm worth? How do I find clients that are willing to pay more than Fiverr prices or Upwork prices? Okay. So for, let me divide the answer to, to like two. Okay. The first one is, I think it's kind of a mentality thing, and I don't wanna you know, offend everybody, but anyone who's watching, but I think that when you are coming off saying like, other people don't value design, what should I do? It's like you are blaming other people for the fact that you are not successful, or right? it's other people's fault. And I think that you have to be responsible for yourself. And so I live in a country that I don't think that anybody would call it like design, like culturally designed or, or valuing design or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm working with, but I only choose to work with the clients who value the design. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually true anywhere. I mean, like if you take the US, for example, mm -hmm. if you take any other country, most clients are gonna choose to go with like a $5, $50 logo. But that doesn't mean you have to work with most people. You have to work with somebody who values what you want mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, regarding the last part of your question, 
I will never try to convince anybody in anything. <laughs> you know, you want to get a fifty dollar logo? Let me let me give you links to the website where you can get it. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm not even gonna try to convince you because I think that the chances of <laughs> convincing somebody who budgeted fifty dollar for a logo to go to twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollar for a logo are non-existent. Mm-hmm. But you should know, and it doesn't matter if you if you live in the Middle East or if you live in Southeast Asia or wherever or in India, mm-hmm. there are clients where you live who have budgeted $20,000 or more for their logo or for whatever okay. because they are like they value it because they have big budget because it makes an impact in their organization you just got to work with them mm-hmm. okay yeah. I'm gonna play yeah. devil's advocate here right. you know let's say you know I'm in India I'm in my garage I am uh, you know trying to grind it out and, and start and yeah. I've done a couple of you know freelance projects for uh, different agencies, and then I've done logos for my bros, and you know all that kind of stuff. How do I find those guys? Where where do they live? Where do where, where do you go to, to so, find these high playing clients? So again, it it is comes back to you know. I, I, it might be like <laughs> not fun to hear this, but it is who you know. You mm. need you need to be associated with the right people. So. If, it doesn't matter if you live in your garage and the only social network that you have is people who are, let's say, can't afford uh, to pay a lot of money. And, and, and so it doesn't matter if you have the best portfolio in the world that's out there on Dribble or wherever, the chances of you actually being trusted by one of those high paying class, mm-hmm. uh, clients is probably low. And so you should probably be where those people are. And to get there, I don't know, maybe you'll have to take an internship, maybe you'll have to relocate, maybe you'll have to, I don't know, reach out to people, mm-hmm. just like I said, and do some, some stuff for free. But get, you know, you have to get your social network to be, you know, in that place. And it's, it's building your sphere of influence. It's ex- building, you know, the general awareness. I, I want to say something that may c- come off like bad, but I'll say it in, in any way. I kind of used to count how many millionaire friends I have in my social network. Okay, so like- Interesting. It would, like if, a few years ago, that would be zero. Like how many <laughs> millionaires know about Ran? Uh-huh. Zero. And now as I've been working, and I've been going to, let's say, event, and in mm-hmm. the, speaking at an event, and in that event, there was like an investor, like a rich investor, and that investor liked what I had to say, so he like retweeted my tweet, or he kind of added mm-hmm. me on Facebook, or whatever. And that, like in the last years, that number has grown from like zero to double digit. Mm-hmm. And, so, and, and that obviously helps me sure. to get clients who are like, high value, can't I, I, afford I it, like has the budget. Come, yeah. I feel like we've come full circle, right? So we, we initiated this conversation, we started this talking about how you've grown your YouTube channel and you're putting yourself out there on a day-to-day basis. And now here we are again, full circle, back around. You put yourself out there, you spoke at events, you're putting yourself out there in but you know what? Let me, the uh, channel. Let, like, let, let, me, let me tell you that again. How did I got uh, invited to speak at this event, actually? I was working at a, at a startup company Company, and one of their investors came to the office one day mm-hmm. and I was just like hanging out with them you know just being nice just what's up and, then, and he saw the work that I was doing at that startup mm. and so he started saying because he's an investor and he works with a lot of companies hey that run guy is pretty is pretty cool and he actually invited me to speak at their event wow. and he actually recommended me to other startups that he worked with and so it wasn't like I it's not just I mean, what I'm trying to say is it's not just you have to put yourself out there you have to be like I don't know I know some people are introverts and maybe they don't want to be public speakers mm. I don't think that's the only way to 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 build yourself and be a successful freelancer uh, that guy saw me there just like on a personal you know one on one basis and sure. and he was impressed I guess and so um, well I think that like a lot of people confuse introversion with uh, something else. Uh, maybe it's imposter syndrome. Maybe yeah. they don't feel like they have uh, what's in you know something inside of them that that people want to see. Um, but I love this definition of introversion by Myers Briggs, and it's that introverts expend energy when they're around people. Extroverts draw energy from people. 
Mm-hmm. And so there's different ways for people to recharge. So just because you're an introvert, it doesn't mean that you can't be around people. It just means that you're going to give energy and you're going to need to recharge solo. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, can you speak to that? Were you ever a victim of feeling like you're, you you should not be here when you're standing on stage or any, did you struggle with that at of all? Of course, all the time. I mean, like imposter syndrome is real. Is like ever like I'm always asking myself, who am I to say this? Like, why would somebody listen to me? Uh, it's part of the reason that like on my channel, I've, I'm very careful about giving advice. I don't want to tell anybody else what to mm. do. I'm super careful. I'm like, this is what works for me, but, and, uh, I also had like our, our business before Prospera was called the New School, which was like kind of like the future was trying mm-hmm. to help um, creatives with the business side. And I felt really bad trying to teach people. Now, it's true. Maybe I have something to teach, but I was feeling really bad about this. I know how you feel. You, you sit there, you look down the barrel of the yeah. lens and it's like, oh my God, who am I? I'm just a, I'm just a poor kid from yeah. Michigan. You know, like, yeah. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be a guru. I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know. Yeah. That's not what yeah. I want to be. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, the people out there, they see, they see you and they're like, man, I want to be this guy. I want to be this. I want to do what he does. And, and giving them a, a glimpse inside there is just immensely valuable. Um, so how did you overcome all that? Who said I did? I don't know. <laughs> I struggle just like everybody else. You know, I'm sure. Yeah. It's an everyday struggle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we touched on New School and Prospero. Yeah. Now these are two very different, or th- these two are very different companies than your freelance practice, which, so your, your, your freelance is more service oriented and the startups are more kind of product based. Yeah. What made you want to go down that road? First of all, they're not totally disconnected because as in my freelance, I uh, help startups build products, and so mm-hmm. this was just building products for myself. Mm-hmm. But um, it's the way I see it is, I don't want to run an agency like a design agency, and so there's a very the, the fine finite amounts of hours that I can sell, and so it's right. not like totally scalable. I can raise my prices, um, but and I should probably, but. Uh, <laughs> but it's not like totally scalable. And so I wanted to try and build a product that can actually, um, I can sell value without selling my time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I know that two two years down the line after starting, that it's much harder than I've imagined. (laughs) Uh, Much, much harder than I've imagined. But it's, but I really enjoy the, yeah, okay. challenge. I, I'm interested in, in kind of exploring that a little bit. So you said scale. Yeah. Can you define that for our audience? Yeah, so, you know, if, if you have big ambitions, like, let's say, economically, then you think, okay, how much, how much money can I make as a freelancer, uh-huh. right? If, depending, if, if I don't want to scale, in a way, like scale is growing, right? So the way to, to scale a freelance is to hire people, uh-huh. to, to grow an agency, hire people, and then you can take more work, but you have to sell more salary. So, mm-hmm. it's, so if you double your work, it doesn't mean that you're doubling your income because you have to pay for people. Your overhead um, grows too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're in software, when you're selling software, you can, you know, double, you can sell 10 times more, it doesn't mean that your overhead is 10 times more. Mm. Um, and, and, and selling software is potentially like infinite. You can really, really sure. scale it to, I don't know, millions of dollars. And, um, but again, I know it's, a, it's kind of a dream now. I think everybody's trying to get into SaaS and, and, mm-hmm. and build their own product because it looks easy. Uh, I know today that it's super, super hard. I'm still trying, but mm-hmm. it's very, very hard. Okay. Um, what, it, why is it hard? Why is it hard? Because, yeah, what's difficult about it? Because there is a lot of talent, it, big competition, you know, and getting, getting, like building software is hard. Understanding what people want is hard. You know, in, in, in when I'm like selling my design services, I know what they want. They're yeah. telling me I need the product. I need a right. logo. I just, and it's it. one-on-one. So it's more of like a conversation. Exactly. Versus, exactly, right. exactly. Exactly. But when you're building a product, it's like you're part guessing, part interviewing people. What's right for one person doesn't necessarily mm. is right for the other person. So it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the channel. It it's has been, been amazing. Been amazing. Where can the people YouTube. find you? Uh, so you can uh, look up YouTube Flux, F-L-U-X, uh, and find my YouTube channel. That's probably where you should get started. If you want to check out Prospero, our product for freelancer, that's goprospero.com. Um, yeah. That's All right. Yeah. Guys, I hope you uh, found value out of this video. If you liked it, do me a favor and gently click the like button below. Don't oh, smash heard, it. Yeah, no smashing. Are smashing it. No, no. no. Only do just, on just a gentle okay. click will do. Okay. Um, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. Christo clap, Ben. Okay. Rolling. Take one. That's your clap? Yeah. You want to do it, Ron? It's a pretty soft one. Okay, you do it. Yeah.